What is up, guys, and welcome to another edition of the Market Marauder Show. Be in the market one trade at a time. If you're new to the Market Marauder Show, it's the investment channel. It helps you to find best deals in the market. If that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Definitely helps YouTube out promote the videos. All right, so I'm going to go in over some of the top stocks uh, to watch. Uh, this is just a list, my watch list uh, for the upcoming week. So hopefully it'll point you all in the right direction. Uh, I'm going to be giving some of the catalysts for some of the decisions behind these moves. Uh, and then also, Make sure you check out the market. It still is very volatile. Lots of things going on in the total market as a whole. Uh, a lot of different sectors are starting to pop over other sectors. But make sure you guys just go look at the total market. Uh, lots of moves being made out there. So first on here, we have tickers on MRIN. This is for Marin Software. Uh, so Marin Software uh, is at $4.50. at four dollars and fifty cents. And they had a week high of $4.99. Uh, so I had a little bullish increase uh, towards the end of the week. Uh, bear in mind, this is when the market is closed. So the price may change depending on when you watch this video. Uh, but uh, they are bullish. Moving average 10 is above 50 and 100, which is this red line above the purple and yellow, which is the 50 and 100. Uh, so the moving average 10 is above the 50 and 100. And a VWAP is above moving average 10. So nice little bullish increase uh, to end the week. It did fall down a little bit, uh, but not as far down as the moving average 150. So I would say it's still bullish overall at $4.50. So one of the catalysts that I want to see for uh, Marin Software is on the 6th of January, they released a press release uh, announcing Amazon DSP integration to expand Amazon advertising solutions. Uh, so the brand now accessed Amazon DSP alongside sponsored ads uh, through the Marin One cross-channel ad management platform. So Marin Software, a leading provider of digital marketing software for performance-driven advertisers and agencies, uh, announced an integration with Amazon Ads uh, Demand Side Platform, or DSP for short. Uh, the integration will allow brands to easily manage, measure, and optimize their Amazon advertising campaigns from sponsored products, sponsored brands, sponsored display uh, to display, uh, video, audio, ads, uh, all with Marin One platform. Uh, Amazon DSP enables advertisers to programmatically, um, programmatically uh, reach Amazon audience audiences at scale across Amazon sites and apps as well as leading publisher uh, sites and third-party exchanges. So I think this is a big step forward, Amazon being an amazingly big brand, uh, especially as far as distribution is concerned. Uh, a lot of people get their goods from Amazon uh, and use Amazon as their one-stop shop for a majority of things. And so having the ability for other companies to be able to expand their ad capability through the Marin One software, I think is a, a great thing moving forward for this company. Um, and so I see more people using uh, the Marin software, which will essentially bolster their balance sheet, uh, adding more profits to them. So I think this is a, a pretty big move forward uh, for Marin software and definitely will help them, especially when their next earnings report comes out. And so that's why I have them on the list. Uh, next one is ABSI or ABSCI uh, Corporation. Uh, they had a week high of $9.26, uh, jumping from the $6.12 low that they had. They have since fallen down, though, uh, starting a little bit of a bearish downward trend. They did bounce off the moving average 50 line, which is this yellow line, uh, ending at $6.98. But definitely above the 612, uh, which was the low uh, that they had for the week. So we're going to be looking to see if they can break through 780. Um, price target that I'm going to have for them is going to be 810 for next week. And so background on them, uh, they just announced uh, on the 7th of January of this year uh, that they're going to have a research collaboration with Merrick. Uh, now Merrick is a large pharmaceutical company that has been around for multiple years, uh, 30 plus years. Um, it is a great dividend stock as well, if you're interested in that. Uh, but they are, are also uh, in development of a um, COVID pill. So, you know, Merck is one of the companies on the cutting edge of pharmaceutical technology. And so they're partnering uh, with ABSCI. Uh, and the drug target discovery company, uh, or ABSCI, uh, is the drug and target discovery company harnessing deep learning AI with synthetic biology to expand the therapeutic potential of proteins. Uh, today announced uh, entering into a research collaboration with Merrick uh, using ABSCI's 
AI-powered integrated drug creation platform. Uh, so another collaboration, uh, ABSCI or ABSIC, if you want to call them that, uh, will deploy its uh, bionic protein uh, non-standard amino acid technology to produce enzymes tailored to Merrick's biomanufacturing uh, applications and receive an upfront and certain other milestone uh, payments. In addition, Merrick has the option to nom nominate up to three targets and enter into a drug discovery collaboration agreement uh, and ABSIC or ABSCI um, would then be eligible uh, to receive up to 610 million in upfront fees and milestone payments uh, for all three targets as well as research funding uh, and tiered royalties on sale so 610 million dollars uh, to help bolster their balance sheet is definitely a lot of money um, and especially considering where the price point of the stock is at seven dollars and 19 cents i think this will definitely help uh the stock shot up to 926 when this news came out uh but i think as we get closer to uh their quarterly numbers starting to come out this could definitely jump back up past 926 in my personal opinion uh, especially considering 610 million dollars would be added to their balance sheet and so uh, that's why I have them on the list uh, I think they have a good potential to continue to go up uh, especially in their technology I think it's a technology that could be used for a lot of pharmaceutical companies which we know uh, are plenty of companies that are out there uh, could use this technology not just Merrick so bear in mind this is not financial advice i'm not telling you to invest or not to invest into any of these plays just showing you what i have on my watch list next we have gbox which is stands for uh green box uh they had a high of five dollars and 43 cents uh bounced off of the moving average 50 and 100 jumping back up to five dollars even to end the week uh so they started off around three dollars and 97 cents uh and then jumped back up going to be looking to see if they can retest this $5.43 uh, for next week and in the future. So this is based on an article that they had that came out on the 7th uh, as well, showing that their retail division saw an average increase of 116%, uh, uh, demonstrating remarkable growth compared to the same period of 2020. So it was the best quarter that they had recorded uh, in their nine year history. So I think that's a great thing for the company moving forward uh, and will definitely help them make some more changes to the company uh, and really bolster their projection for 2022. And so that's why I have them on here, because they had such significant numbers uh, for their quarter for 2021. Next, we have uh, Sigma Lithium Corporation trading under the ticker SGML, uh, and they had a week high of $11.50. They ended the week at $11.13, so not too far from that $11.50 uh, mark that they hit last week. So we're going to be looking to see if they could retest $11.50 for this upcoming week, uh, starting off from a low of $9.51 that they had uh, in the previous week. And so this company specializes in lithium. Uh, I think lithium is going to be a huge factor, uh, definitely one of the um, sectors to look at, especially with all of these companies starting to manufacture batteries for EVs. Lithium is a very uh, integral component when building uh, EV batteries. You have lithium, nickel, um, and then sometimes you have copper as well as being a, another main source but mainly lithium and nickel being uh, the main two components to help make a lot of these EV batteries. Uh, so Tesla uses uh, a lot of lithium. Uh, you have GE, I mean GM that uses a lot of lithium. Uh, you have Ford. Uh, you have you know other companies that make EV cars have a high demand for lithium uh, for their battery technology and battery capabilities. So I think the lithium market in general is going to continue to grow. Uh, going to a press release from them, this is just showing their press releases. Uh, right now, they're trying to rebalance their balance sheet, uh, doing a lot of different things, uh, announcing closing of private placement uh, for gross proceeds of $136.7 million. Uh, you have uh, some funds of $64.2 million uh, that are managed by BlackRock. Uh, and then upside in 60% uh, of its previous placement for this 136.7 million. And then you have another placement, uh, 42% uh, to the 85 million. So they're bolstering their balance sheet, in my personal opinion, uh, trying to get it under uh, schedule or under wraps uh, heading into 2022. Um, and I think once that happens, once they start getting more orders in for their lithium, I think it will definitely help the company uh, moving forward, especially as the demand grows, as this EV uh, push really ramps up.
And lastly on here, we have Alcoa Corporation uh, trading uh, under the ticker sign AA. They had a low of 57.21, hit a high of 62.89 uh, this week. Going to be looking to see if they can retest the 62.89 uh, in this next coming week. Uh, they specialize in aluminum. Uh, I think aluminum is in shortage. Definitely has a high demand, uh, especially as we try to uh, fix these supply chain issues uh, and roll out more vehicles being produced um, into 2022 uh, because the market was very low in 2021. And so I think if you can fix the supply chain, of the aluminum this company uh, will definitely start to make lots of money uh, considering the demand is so high so 62.89 uh, is going to be a target price that i have for them to see if they can retest that high uh, they are bullish moving average 10 is above 50 and 100 vwap is slightly below moving average 10 but i suspect once the market opens uh, that will change so this is the Alcoa Corporation. Um, this is, is some of their press releases that they have. They reached an agreement, uh, future of uh, San Caprine uh, smelter. So that's just basically a device that helps to melt down aluminum. So they're going to be having uh, some devices to help produce more aluminum. Uh, then they also they have their schedule for their uh, fourth quarter uh, full year 2021 earnings that's going to be on January 19th. So that's definitely something very important to look at. Uh, definitely going to be very exciting, especially considering the high demand for aluminum and how much aluminum this company actually produces. Uh, then it talks about uh, alcohol further de-risk certain U.S. pension plans uh, through additional annuity contracts. So I think this company is definitely going to be one to watch, especially having their earnings coming up here pretty soon. So that's the watch list. Uh, you have tickers on MRIN, tickers on ABSI, tickers on GBOX, tickers on SGML, and tickers on AA. Uh, drop a comment down below with some of the stocks you are watching for this week. While you're down there, make sure that thumbs up. Definitely helps YouTube. I'm going to the videos, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.